Our News on Terror segment tonight. President Trump appointed Ambassador John Bolton to be his new national security advisor, and radical Islamists took notice. Immediately after Trump announced Bolton's appointment, liberals tried to cast Bolton as an Islamophobe. They hurled various insults his way. But what makes Bolton so dangerous to radicals like the Muslim Brotherhood is that Bolton knows what their true agenda is, and he is not shy about exposing them. With me now from the Center for Security Policy, Kyle Scheidler. Kyle, good to see you. Always good to see you, Liz. All right, Kyle, talk to me about this, because there seems to be uh, an uptick in the number of attacks and negative news stories, articles, the like, uh, attacking John Bolton. There seems to be an uptick recently in this, and, but some of his core policies, I mean, he opposes the Iran deal, which is pretty consistent across conservative circles, and he wants to designate the Muslim Brotherhood as a terror organization. How do those two things combined make one an Islamophobe? Well, it makes the Muslim Brotherhood and their front groups in, in this country very, very nervous, Liz, because Ambassador Bolton understands that the conflict which we are engaged in is an ideological conflict. And he, so he realizes that you have to deal with the Muslim Brotherhood, which produces the ideology uh, that all Sunni jihadists follow, if you want to be successful in this conflict. And he has been very, very explicit about that. And so they are absolutely terrified that they will uh, come under scrutiny and that their own connections, uh, will be, they'll be held to account for that. So they are very, very nervous right now, Liz. Right, and they should be. I mean, I, I want to read something uh, for our viewers here, too. This is from the explanatory memorandum. This is from the Muslim Brotherhood. This was found in our country several, several years back. It is essentially um, the goals, the manifesto of the Muslim Brotherhood for America. They say, and I quote, the Muslim brothers must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believers so that it is eliminated and God's religion is made victorious over all other religions. I mean, Kyle, isn't it foolish of anybody? And I'm talking about past national security advisors. I'm talking about past administrations. I'm talking about politicians, elected officials right now. Isn't it foolish to ignore something that states so clearly what they're trying to accomplish in our country? Well, Liz, the document that you read from was entered into evidence at a federal trial, the Holy Land Foundation trial, where uh, several individuals from the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and the Holy Land Foundation charity were all convicted uh, of engaging in terrorism finance on behalf of Hamas. So this is not a uh, piece of speculation. This is not something that we have invented. This is something that the federal government, the U.S. government, says that the Muslim Brotherhood uh, explicitly indicates that they want to do. This is uh, c classic subversion, Liz. And if this uh, was an ordinary country, if this was Russia or China or the Cubans during the Cold War, we would have understood this concept that it was a subver subver subversive threat. But because the Muslim Brotherhood is largely a non-state actor, although they do have a number of alliances with uh, countries like Qatar and Turkey, uh, because they're largely a non-state actor, uh, a lot of people don't seem to want to accept this for what it is. Right, or seem to want to acknowledge the fact that even though they are a non-state actor, they are extremely powerful, and they have, uh, they have the capacity to actually put some of these subversive tactics into action and destroy us from within. It sounds conspiracy, but the more you read about it, the scarier it seems here. My question is this sort of, um, the uptick that I mentioned at the beginning of the segment, the uptick in attacks against John Bolton, it seems like this is rhetoric that would come from the PR agents of the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, who, who is behind this uptick in, uh, in these attacks? And how does the Muslim Brotherhood already have this kind of hold on some of our some of our media outlets even, some of our elected officials, some people who served in the Obama administration, how, how did they get where they are? Well, I think you have two things that are going on, Liz. One is the financial backing and the lobbyists of countries like Qatar and Turkey, which are both major supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood, and they are spreading a lot of money around Washington uh, in order to push their agenda. The other issue is the uh, alliance between uh, front groups for the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States, groups like CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, for example, and elements of the left or the hard left. Uh, they also want to see President Trump fail, uh, and so there's an agreement there uh, in order to, as much as possible, uh, make things difficult for uh, Ambassador Bolton when he takes over as National Security Advisor. Of course, the reality is they have no way to stop this. 
Uh, it's not a position which requires Senate approval, uh, and so he will be uh, the National Security Advisor, and uh, Trump will be very fortunate for that. Right, and like I said in the introduction here, each one of these attacks, liberals only uh, launch this type of attack if the individual is a threat to their progressive ideology. Every one of these attacks should be worn as a badge of honor because John Bolton understands the threat that our country faces, and he's not afraid to say so. He's not afraid of the backlash. He's not afraid of being called an Islamophobe because he's not. He knows he's not, and this is for the greater good. Kyle, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it.